Love Line, Coast to Coast. Here we are, Love Line. I'm Dr. Drew. That's Adam Carolla with the broken mic. Here you go, Adam. Here. Right. Oh, I feel smarter using Drew's mic. Hey, it's Loveline. I'm a Coral Dr. Drew, Dr. Drew, board certified physician, Dixon Medicine Specialist. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Jamie Presley is our guest tonight. She stars in uh, Tom Katz, which is the uh, movie you've seen the millions and millions and millions of billboards for all over the country, I'm sure. I passed at least 35 of them driving in tonight. And uh, Drew still has no mic, but uh, that's God's will. We have no problem with that. This uh, opens up uh, March 30th. Yeah. This Friday. And uh, Jamie, let's see. Well, Jamie's on Jack and Jill, and Jamie's on, like, the top... She's in the top eh, 10 or 20 of all those 100 most beautiful lists. I was 25, or 100 one year, 25 last year, and 7 this year. Yeah. Oh, working right. my way oh, up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I got to tell you, they, they, it, it's like <clears throat> those those lists, I can never quite figure them out. I always, what? there's always 80 chicks it's I would like put It's like 50's most beautiful people. Who the hell are they? Well, they always throw you in... Know, I mean? Good publicists. Yeah. Good people, publicists. people with good publicists. <clears throat> all right. Now, uh, Jamie's mic is uh, no, it's all right. it's out. Is it out? It's, it's in. Right. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I've just seen you in a ton of those, like, Maxim mm -hmm. and... Uh, Stuff. Uh, load and spank and I mean the <laughs> non whatever they're called. The the point is not nude, but you know the pinup girl is back. We had uh, Bob Guccione Jr. in here a couple weeks ago, and we were sort of talking to him about that. Mm -hmm. But all right, let's get to our controversy about me calling you nuts okay. uh, last yeah, you time. You called me nuts. Right, that was on the air, right? Yes, it was on the air. Now, who told you about that? She heard it. I heard it, because oh. Simon, was uh, my boyfriend, was on the air with you guys that night. Right. That's when you said you said I was nuts. Oh, no, I I thought I called you nuts you before, before that. You did before that, but then you called me nuts again when he was on. So we're going oh, on two I times, said, Yeah, but I was just reiterating the first nuts. Right. The second one right. doesn't count. Okay. See, now, I don't think of nuts, especially if you're good-looking, as that bad a thing. Right, okay, I see. Do you know what I'm saying? No, I don't. No, you don't. Wait, doesn't no. mean nuts. Nuts and nutty. True. Well, that no. Nutty. I don't want to be nutty. He said nutty. No, I nutty. He may no, he be said better she's nuts. nuts. Oh, because, I did. Because, oh, <laughs> okay. He said she's nuts. Well, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah, but, it's all right. But, but wait a minute. The last time, no, wait a minute. Last yeah. time, in, in your defense, last yeah. time we met Jamie, you were starring in the. Jerry Springer, Springer. Springer movie. <laughs> I understandably you, you, so. And, I was nuts. Okay. And, and you, and you came on the television version of Love Line and talked. In in graphic terms, which we appreciated. Well, yes. uh, I just think people want to hear. People like to hear the truth. It's kind of like a lot of times people beat around the bush, and a lot. Of, I just rather have people tell it to me straight. So I'm southern, and I grew up that way. You well, that's why I like called you is. nuts. <laughs> oh, I see. So I it was a good nut. I didn't want to sugarcoat it. No, I want to, <laughs> I want to tell you straight. Which is what I don't do. Right, sugarcoat. No, but okay. Well, let me let me uh, and uh, I'm glad you came in. By I'm the way, glad you I, had I, me I do I do like you, and the, the nuts thing was wasn't an attack, mind you. I didn't take it as Oh, one. good. I'm glad. But uh, let me ask you, and uh, again, try not to take too much offense to it, but <laughs> are, are you, do you, do you consider yourself completely normal or, do you, or are you a little nuts? You know what? I don't think anybody in our business is completely normal. Um, not to mention the fact that numerous people in our business, uh, the great actors, nine times out of ten are chemically imbalanced and aren't on Zoloft or whatever they I, should be. You I, know what I mean? I totally agree. But then there's like Tom Hanks and there's Andy Dick. Well, he's Dick. brilliant. There's Andy Dick. Andy Dick. I love Andy Dick. I love Andy Dick, he's too. He's so but what, funny. No, but what I'm saying is Andy Dick is so, nuts. Absolutely nuts. Yeah. Tom Hanks is sane. True. And so I'm saying, you know... Yeah, I agree with you that most actors, most comedians, most performers are a little bit crazy, but they're the saner ones. Yeah, and I, I would David call Arquette. myself one of the saner ones. I'm, I know who I am, where I came from, and at the end of the day, I'm wearing sweats. You know, I like. Where, where did you come from? North Carolina, so uh, in a where? small, small town called Kinston, when the whole county had twenty-seven thousand people in it. Wow. So you know, and and the cool thing is that out of that one little city, Jerry Stackhouse and I came out of that. So we, basketball player. Yeah, Thank from you. Detroit. We went to uh, high school. Together. Together, and he was the first to make it big, and 
You were the so, second. I was the second. It was kind of cool. You know, we're from a small, small town. But as far as being nuts is concerned, I think everybody's nuts on occasion. Right. Especially with lack of sleep. Well, <clears> no. <throat> and just, traveling the I way get, we do. Oh, I get yeah. crabby, but, uh, well, maybe a little. Yeah, bit. I'd say crabby. I wouldn't call myself insane. All right. Well, uh, I, I know apologize. What's going on. I didn't know you were going to hear that. Yeah, I, it's all right. You can call me crabby, but don't be calling me nuts. Oh. All right. Uh, Drew? Yeah. You ready to uh, rock and roll here? I had a Let's take the first caller. Chris? Yeah? You're 17? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, Well, this is kind of embarrassing. Um, I'm actually uncircumcised, unlike a lot of my friends, I noticed. And uh, at the head of my penis, I noticed that there's a slight odor, uh, kind of funk, and I really don't like it. So I've been trying for like at least half a year now, you know, extensively paying careful attention, washing the head of my penis, and nothing really... Extensive cleaning. Hmm? Yeah, you know, it's too bad the scent isn't at the base of your penis, because you could blame it on the balls. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? That's your new book, isn't it? Blame it on the the balls. It's actually a sitcom I'm working with uh, uh, UPN on right now. We're just trying to hash out some of the beats. (laughs) Blame it on the balls, yeah. Uh, it's a musical. Uh, Chris? Well, yeah. more, many guys do complain about the sort of nut aroma. Have you not been able to keep it odor-free? I've I'm, been trying, and, like... In spite I mean, of... If I'm at home after I, like, go and take a piss, I'll just, you know, give it a good, you know, just wash it real quick. I mean, I can't do it, like, in public restrooms or anything. I mean... You can if you pee in the sink like I do. You're right there. <laughs> I was actually thinking about that. I, there well, would, yeah. would actually be a convenience. Thank you. In the sink. Can't you use some kind of powder or something to keep it dry? He, that... Jamie's on to the right uh, sort of line of thinking here, which is that it needs to be dry, Chris. Super dry. Super dry. Yeah, like you take a hair dry, handheld hair dryer to it, dry it off. Put bone, a sack bone, of uh, cornstarch down there. Bone that dry. Works. Bone dry. I've actually even considered maybe getting circumcised as like a solution. Well, it might be a solution. Some guys do that. Uh, it, it, you know, there's all this consternation about uh, foreskin preservation and should children be circumcised. But this is, having a foreskin is sort of a hassle. Yeah. I mean, all these they say and now is it true? For weight, the wind drag, and the whole thing. <laughs> the wind drag is sure. a bitch. Oh right? yeah. Um, but don't they say that? Uh, if you're like, for instance, my father, out of like eight kids in the family, is the only one, and we have no idea why, who was not circumcised. It's very bizarre. Hmm. And my dad didn't know I knew, and last summer I was home, my dad, my brother, and I were joking around about it. And he heard me, and he was like, What? Chicken, how'd you know that? And I'm like, Well, Chicken. <laughs> that's the nickname since I was born. <laughs> and he's like, Chicken, how'd you know that? And I'm like, Well, you know, I just heard it from a little birdie. I'm all, What's the deal? He's all, Well, you get more. They say he, he you have know. more sensation. I don't think my dad knows anything. He's just no. like trying to make yeah. it okay. And, and people claim that there's more sensation, but we. But that's not true, right? Well, there's a difference in sensation, but the fact is, guys are mostly concerned with delaying their ejaculation. More sensation is not necessarily a good thing. Right. Uh-huh. And and it's also one of these things. It's like saying it's better to be six five than it is to be five five. If you're born and you're five five your entire life and you never know what it's like, you don't really miss it. Right. Do, it's like you know if you've I mean? never had sex, you don't know what you're missing. Uh, yeah. Although mm-hmm. I had a pretty good idea all the way through high school what I was missing because <laughs> most of my friends who were getting laid filled me in on what I was right. missing on almost a regular basis, okay. and I actually saw them. And saw what I was missing. That's that I okay, never well that's a, yeah. had what I I didn't know. So that's I did probably know, traumatizing. Yes. It was. Yeah. He, he's, he's he's had a repetition compulsion to watch ever since. And so right. He has amassed this fortune in <laughs> pornography. That is so, kept in a special that is bunker. so unfair. <laughs> but so true. <laughs> unfair. But so true, 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 but yet unfair. It might be true. True and unfair. Stacy. 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 Caller goes by the name Stacy is twenty one. All right, we'll go oh, to, to Lynette. Yes, you're fourteen. Uh huh. What's up? Um, um, I'm like weight obsessed. At fourteen. Yeah, and right. I have um really bad trust issues. What kind of trust issues? Yeah. Something happened to you? Um. Yeah. Like what? all my life, I've like been really screwed over. <laughs> what happened? Well, when I was like five or six, um, I had a family member like sexually molest me. Nice. Who was the family member? My um, older cousin. Okay. And um, about like when I was in third grade, I'm not sure if this really happened, but my ma- my dad cheated on my mom. Mm-hmm. And then um, about a year ago, I had a 
like a semi-serious relationship where my boyfriend slept with my best friend. Mm. Yeah. So you have trust issues with men? Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and yet you, when you do, it's interesting how when you do decide to trust someone, you pick people who are not worthy of your trust. Bad pattern. Yeah. So what is your problem with your weight? Well, okay, my friends, like, they say I'm not fat, but, like, I used to look about 120. You're a 120? How yeah. tall are you? About 5'5". Five five. Okay, let me tell you something. Like, I'm, I don't weigh 120, though. What do you weigh? I weigh about 150. Okay. Who's 120, then? Like, no, they say I look 120. Oh, well, <clears> that's <throat> nice. Maybe they're talking about years. When I was, uh... 15, I just turned 15. I was uh, given, it was like kind of dangling in my face, a contract to go to Japan for modeling. Same here. I've been, yeah, they took me instead of you, though. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, anyway, they, I, I've been a dancer and a gymnast all my life, and I had Mary Lou Retton legs I couldn't get rid of. And they were muscular. It, it was muscle weighs more than fat. They told me I was fat and overweight, and I was uh, 118 pounds and 5'4". And uh, they just were concerned about the weight issue. So I decided, okay, if I can't, I, I tried to lose weight. It didn't work. I worked out every day. It didn't work. I never lost anything. So I decided I was going to start uh, throwing up to get rid of it. Ooh. And because uh, I love food so much, I didn't want to not eat and starve myself. So I would eat and then I would purge. And my best friend found me doing that one day. And it only went on for like a month, month and a half. And she busted, uh, her boyfriend and they were there, and uh, she told her boyfriend what was going on, because I locked myself in the bathroom, and she heard me getting sick, and her boyfriend busted the door down. They uh, jerked me out of the bathroom, slammed me on my bed, and said, this is going to stop right now. And the, uh, <clears throat> the next thing I know, I had my girlfriends taking me over to a personal trainer friend of theirs, who <clears throat> measured my body my body fat turned out that out of the 118 pounds i was 101 pounds muscle and water and 17 pounds fat i didn't have any fat to lose so i don't know what your weight issues are and, and the 150 pounds you know what you're alive and puking is the worst thing you can do there's nothing more important than you and your body so doing that kind of thing to make somebody else happy is ridiculous you gotta love yourself and remember that uh it, weight's not that important go walk go work out do something you know to get rid of it but don't sit there and feel sorry for yourself and think i'm fat wow that's nice okay. lynette yeah let me tell you a story about uh being 18 and having a carpet cleaning contract dangled in front of me <laughs> after high school oh yes Bill doggo and juan wanted me to go in the van with him to clean carpet you, you weren't fat enough wasn't fat enough wow. so i started eating heartbreaking uh, yeah burritos lynette the men thing <clears throat> please mm -hmm. you need to uh Love yourself before you're going to love anybody else. And everybody right now, because you're not feeling so good about yourself, is, uh, yeah. is, is, they're, they're not the kind of people you need to be hanging out with. Yeah, and the only way that things are going to prove, Linda, is if you do find people that are worthy of your trust, and then, in fact, you trust them. Yeah. And, and, and like, you're going to propel people, you're going to push people away who actually you can trust, because that's going to sort of evoke a lot of those feelings of pain and abandonment and abuse that you've sort of pushed yeah. down. But, like, um, the friends, like, I do find people I can trust. And, like, they've been my best friend for, like, a few years or more than a few years. And they somehow, like, they find, always find like, a way to backstab me. Like, yeah, they're, those aren't the right people. They find a way to do what? Backstab. Backstab. Oh, yeah. Hey. That's right. That's the point. Now, I, I suggest you get a therapist because you, you got to work. I mean, after being molested by your cousin, it, it's just something you got to hash out. <clears throat> Otherwise, um, you're going to make a lot of bad decisions. Plus, eating disorders. Sometimes you can't control those behaviors. It, you know, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about a friend today, and how do you how do you explain to someone what makes a human do this? It just or, or what makes a human cut. It's almost like when you take a, any other mammal and you you damage it in somebody overstimulate it or something they'll start chewing on their arms you know they'll start right. doing things yeah a and dog will like start chewing, chewing on, on itself. itself and that's what humans do wait a minute don't we have a, isn't there a dog right here is wearing a lampshade on its head <laughs> yes. is that dog drunk or is it chewing on itself what's it chewing Anne, on is itself. that your dog and it's, it's whose dog is that lauren lauren that's your dog and uh what's it doing is it chewing on itself 
Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's what there the you lampshades are for. The, Maybe we should dog, make human lampshades. The dog was uh, molested no, by no, his uncle. No, it was, it was uh, given ice skating lessons when I was very young. I see. Uh-huh. I see. Got an eating <laughs> disorder. Imagine an animal the eating disorder. All right. Uh, let's talk to the short mic. This thing's driving me insane. Mm-hmm. I cannot do the show well, sitting upright. I have I to recline. This thing isn't any good. What if I swap it? Oh, is this cord bad? Yeah. That seems really? Cool. We'll ch- at the break, you can check it out, right? The It'll cord? Th- this was given to us by a guy in a band. Remember, remember he said it was the world's best cord? Down, what an it? ass. Orgy gave us Orgy. This, uh, this cord. All right. Anyway, Lynn? Hi. You're 21. Yes. What's up? Okay, I have something kind of weird. When my boyfriend gets cum on his skin, he breaks out in a rash. Yeah. I'm the same, uh, I'm the same way What's except for my, my gums and <laughs> upper palate. I, I don't know. And he can, he can wash it off and the rash goes away. Whose cum is it? His? It's his, yeah. Your next, your next, hmm? your next series. Your next <laughs> yeah. Whose cum sitcom. Is it? Yeah. Blame it on the balls <laughs> is the first one. And who's, who's come in it? Who's come is it? Yeah, so yeah. It's story. It's a children's <laughs> book I'm working on. <laughs> um, so what, what should he do? Uh, I understand why it actually washes away when, you were, when he washes himself off. Yeah, I, he'll get like hives, I guess, is the best way to describe it. So and it's like a, a red raised area with a sort of... Why is he getting himself on himself? Yeah. That would be because of me. <laughs> it's kind I of see. a long story, but it gets on him. Well, that, 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 that. are you on top of him? No, if 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 we're having oral sex or whatever, if if it gets on him, then uh huh. Oh, oral sex. Are you translating? Yeah, you're 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 giving him a BJ and it's and you're putting it back on him. You're not swallowing. In other no, words, no, 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 no. <laughs> ah, what? Catholic? No. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, you're Catholic. That's yeah, right. But. That's right. What, and, is that, what does that mean? You me, have to swallow? Hold on. I haven't what given, does that mean? No, please. Let me what, give that, my wait. swallow speech for just one second. <laughs> uh, I basically look at the semen as my... It, no different than I look at the garbage in my house, which is I don't care where you take it as long as you pick it up and move it off the curb. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't care if you if the garbage man eats it, puts it in a landfill, or throws it in the neighbor's pool. Just as long as it's, I don't see it. You would prefer you not use that backing up sound in the morning. Me, me, me. <laughs> no, here's what here's what I'm saying, ladies. You don't have to ingest this stuff. It it can go in your mouth, and then you can just go spit it in the sink. But just would like you, you took that in your mouth. But hold on a second. I've taken a swig of bad milk before. You know, you're standing at the fridge. You take a swig of bad milk, right? Now, I don't spit it all over the refrigerator, but I don't swallow it. I walk over to the sink and I spit it in the sink, and then I rinse my mouth out. It's bizarre, though, that he breaks himself out with his own. Yeah, th- I might even wonder if he breaks out at all. I don't know what they're looking at exactly, because in, in, you know, even if you had a a hive type rash it would persist for a while after the thing is washed off yeah it, it almost sounds like like before you said it was from oral it sounded like if you were actually like having intercourse it could be like a rubbing thing that you're getting as opposed to it just being you know a rash from the cum but this is on his belly right yeah you, you, you don't got a uh, a ficus tree or a well, trash wait, no, wait. can I, I or something you can earn someplace you can... I want to roll back a little bit to the word Catholic comment. What, what exactly does that mean to you? Oh, I was only teasing. Okay, because um. <laughs> okay, I was like, the fact that you're calling in and you're Catholic and this is yeah. all a problem is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, fish on Friday and the <laughs> semen on Saturday. That's how it works. Sunday, I guess it's okay. <laughs> and, and, and tell me again what the rash looks like. It's like a red bump? Yeah, it's just like little red bumps and then it tends to go away. It goes away after what period of time? How long? Like twenty minutes. Yeah, it could be just it could be just some sort of uh, irritant. Does he, have, does he have sensitive skin, allergic skin in general? Does he have, yeah. a, does he have asthma? No. Because people that have what are called uh, a a topic a topic dermatitis, they'll have sort of sinusitis, asthma, well, and very very sensitive right, well, maybe skin. I and I go. bet that's just his skin's probably sensitive to everything. And uh, do you have yeah. to spit it on him though? It it doesn't ever go in my mouth. It doesn't go in oh. your mouth. Oh. Why don't you get it in your mouth? You're giving him a BJ, right? But I don't want it in there. I don't. I know. I know. And we don't want to get down there on you either. But you know what? We do it. <laughs> we do it. And then we pay you and you leave. You understand? Oh. That's how it works. <laughs> that is the world. Listen, you know, uh, Drew, we, we have not touched on this in, in some time. Out of the 24 hours that are in the day, that that 
two or three seconds when the man is ejaculating, that is the one time you don't want to interrupt things for him. Right. Do you know what I mean? The phone ringing, moving, and a woman will give you the oral sex. She'll keep. She'll. She'll be. She'll. She'll. She'll keep the same rhythm, the same everything. But go on fifteen minutes, and then right at the most crucial three seconds, it's like uh, back away. Get and the that hand stops going. Them, yeah. it, mm-hmm. it, it's. It ain't gonna stop you, but it's kind of. It's a. It's a little bit of a buzzkill in the cadence. It screws the cadence up, and yeah, just hang with it and use my bad milk analogy. If it doesn't taste good, tell them to eat better. There you go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay off the curry. Our, our point is, why don't we make our point on that one, too? We have made that one in a while. Which is what? About, you know, you can eat marshmallows and strawberries and stuff that comes out of you, your poo and your pee. Right. Ain't going to taste any yeah, better. It's not right. like... It's not Seems like about the same. Yeah, really? Yeah. It's just yeah. Not. Don't worry about my fecal matter. I ate a hot fudge sundae. <laughs> <laughs> With marshmallows. It's not like I ate liver and onions. <laughs> I thought alcohol affected it. Medication can affect it, oh, okay. it, it, you know, and, and some things can't affect it, but it's it's sort of bad and worse. Uh huh. It's not. It's good never and bad. good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's never, never really good. tasted yeah. that great. Yeah. Right, right. Lord knows. Okay. Lord knows. I've, uh, I've drew well. You've you've been around the world. I mean, you've tasted every semen, right? <laughs> You you want semen tasting in the uh, semen country in South France, France, right? <laughs> Where you ride a bike with a basket on it to mm-hmm. different <laughs> different penises and taste the uh, taste the semen. <laughs> Cleanse your palate with a little sherbet and then move yeah, on yeah, to the your, next your, your penis. Book, your book is very popular. <laughs> Blame it on the balls. Blame it on, Blame the, it ball. on the balls. It's been translated in over thirty languages. <laughs> Jamie Presley is our uh, guest tonight. Tom Katz coming out uh, this Friday at uh, theaters near you. We'll take ourselves a little break, and we'll be right back after this. Hey, Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Bill Maher in here tomorrow night. Uh, Temptation Island reunion Tuesday night. The Mighty Mighty Boss Tones are going to be in here on Wednesday, and uh, we're always happy to see them. And Jake Busey is not going to be here Thursday. That sucks. He's a cool guy. But uh, Horatio, Horatio Sanchez is going to be here. Horatio Sanz. He's great. Oh, Sanz. That's right. He's great. Oh, we're working. Hilarious. Well, he is funny. I'd like to, uh, I wouldn't mind him coming in. Jamie Presley is our guest tonight. Tom Katz is the name of her new movie coming I out. I just got to spit out there real quick. Sure. Uh, a week later, Joe Dirt. Mm. Oh, so oh yeah. Too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Those are big yeah, Sony yeah. projects. Uh-huh, Columbia. Yeah. You're working, baby. I'm doing are, a Columbia one Are you guys now. rediscovering a newfound love here? Is this okay? Yeah. yeah. There's are, something cooking here. I think there here. could be. Things are working out okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything's good. I, I mentioned, Jamie mentioned cornstarch. Maybe, maybe, uh, she, she backed me on my cornstarch yeah. plan. I think it's a good idea. I saw Jamie's uh, place on Cribs. What'd you think? It, it looked good. I liked the, uh, the he had a little like view of the harbor kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it hangs over the harbor. Yeah. I, I was just th- bought a new house, though, uh, in L.A. because the minute that aired, yeah. my old assistant was told during that time they're not allowed to shoot the front of the house because mm-hmm. it shows exactly mm-hmm. where I live. Mm-hmm. And they can't say Huntington Harbor. They can only say Huntington Beach. Mm-hmm. So what do they say? Huntington Harbor, Huntington Beach. And then they shoot the front of the house. Like, mm-hmm. right, it's all at the same time. Yeah. Uh, Halloween what, what is, comes. What is it, it cribs? It, it crib is a place. It's that, like lifestyles, you know, but on MTV. MTV, okay. That's um, right. basically, the doorbell rings. It's Halloween. I'm thinking. I'm in sweats. Could not look more, you know, hideous. Thinking it's my girlfriend's going to dinner with me or it's kids. So I'm walking out with a ball. Open the door. Fifteen guys are scaling my wall with my stucco wall with one hand, one leg over the wall already, and they're all, "It's her! It's her!" And then you hear this "Wah!" from behind my wall, and I'm, "Oh Jesus!" And uh. I ran back in the house, but they wouldn't leave. So I went out there and opened my gate a little and took a couple pictures so they'd go away. But yeah, yeah basically, I'm Ooh, moving. Scary. Yeah, I well, am you, moving. You, are you, you have to move now because well, of I don't that? have to move because of it. It's just I've been commuting for eight years and I'm tired of it. Yeah, I, it's been a bit much. Well, if you want to, you know, crash out of my pad for yeah, a I'll of, give you a call. I, mean, I might need to. Yeah. I'm not talking. Actually, I'm just talking about for a couple of years to <laughs> get on your feet. <laughs> to like get on you're, you're my feet. You're going to end up living in that neighborhood anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You'll be hanging in my crib. 
All right. Well, uh, anyway, it was uh, it was nice, and uh, but I you guys are fine. No, uh, you guys are found a new found love. That's good. And uh, that's talc? good. We're that's gonna work yeah, on talc. it. Talc. It's built on talc. What you don't know about Adam is he like has so much talc he like can build paper mache replicas of his genitalia. Wow. Yeah. 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 It doesn't take that much material to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I probably could. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Hey, Drew, no jacuzzi here. You know what I'm saying? We got something going on here. I don't know if you're funkifying it. Maria? Yeah. You're 15. What's going on? All right. Well, like, a couple, I don't know. Before I moved here, like, I went to, like, party with a couple of my friends. Where, where is here? Philly. Philly? 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 Yeah. Are we on the air in Philly? Yeah. I, uh, come on, Drew. You know we, we are. We had not been. <laughs> I've been. Know. I've been. I I've been no dying idea. on that city. We, we've been. Uh, we are natural. Philly's are we, uh, a good city. It just no. Went but there. we we should be there. I, I have not been told. The, well, we are, just got there. Are great. are we on there? Yeah, but we are now. Yeah. It's always great. I'm glad radio they told us. Yeah. To I'm glad they what, told us. Thanks. What's oh, going on, ladies? Please. All right. See, I was told that I got drunk and I slept with one of my friends, but the person that told me that, I don't know if I can trust whether that's true or not. Did you go to the source and ask the guy? The guy, well, to supposedly the guy was drunk too. So, right, did you? Bla you were blacked out. Yeah. Well, listen, I've been drunk every time I've had sex. I remember every. I yeah. Time. I highly doubt he times. forgets and blacked out. Well, but yeah. a severe blackout. And Maria, do you have any history of alcoholism in your family? Mm, well, my grandfather is an alcoholic. Oh, yeah, so you, you might have contracted that. And what happens is if you have that gene, you'll tend to use a little more alcohol than normal. And blacking out is sort of a sign that that gene is operating. And at 15, if you're already having blackouts, and blackouts that are so severe that you can't remember something like a sexual encounter, that's pretty significant. Have you had blackouts before from alcohol? I'm not really one that's, like, big on drinking. I mean, it was, like, one of my friends' birthdays and everything, so... Uh, a first great idea would be to uh, turn not down drink. the goddamn radio not or the CD that's in the background. That's No, that's the first that's one. That's the first idea. That's that's before not drinking. You got that, Maria? Yeah. There Could go. you do that, she please? Did. She did. Oh, yeah, I did. Very, very <clears throat> obsequious here. The second, no more alcohol. And then third... I would suggest you see a, a doctor and have a pelvic exam, although you're a little young to go through that. Uh, certainly, if you have been violated, have been sexually assaulted, you need to know it. it I think 15 is perfect to go get exams. You should start at 15 anyway because... Bring it on. I started uh, when I was actually 14. Just yeah. because I, I... How was that? It, it wasn't a bad thing. I mean, I felt better going because then I know I'm okay. It's just like people are afraid to go get HIV tests because they don't want to know what's going to happen, and it's scary. But I'd rather know. Just go take care of it. Be a woman. You're 15. If you're woman enough to drink a beer, you're woman enough to go to the doctor. All right, Maria? I like that. It's too bad it doesn't rhyme, but it's still good. Yeah. Let's see. Not very poetic when it comes to it, stuff like when that. When Adam's away, if you're, Jamie. If you're old enough to drink a beer, you're you old enough. You need me when he's gone, let yeah. me know. I'd uh, love yeah, to. I'm here. Yeah, you hear that? She's right. Her, whenever Adam's gone, she wants to I'm here. Out. That's perfect, okay. except for you're the one who's always gone and I'm always here. <laughs> yeah, Other I don't know that, that I no, can no, be the got, doctor. You've got some man show stuff coming up. Wait a minute, I think I got one. If you're By old, the way, man what? show, are you kidding me? Never you're, miss it. Oh, really? I love John. John? Yeah, Jimmy's brother. Oh, oh, you love Jimmy's brother? Uh, where it was, he's good friends with, you know, Jordan Yeah. and uh, Simon, so yep. we hang out all the time, and that guy could not be funnier. <laughs> Jordan uh, writes for the man show. Yeah. John is uh, Jimmy's younger brother. Have I never met John? Have you ever met John Kimmel? I, I don't think so. Don't think he is so. so great. One of the most hilarious people I've ever met. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. He's I'm like really intelligent and yeah. like smart. I mean, yeah. intelligent, too funny. too smart, yeah. if you ask me, but yeah. <laughs> and he's not looking to take over the crawl. <laughs> 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 yeah. They're going to be a brother team up there doing this show soon. <laughs> All right, now wait a minute. I had a, I had a rhyme. Uh, what was it? Old enough to drink a beer, old enough... For a pap smear. There we go. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank See, you. that's some good Thank stuff. Thank you. Right I should there. cut a PSA. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adam Carolla. I've never actually seen a vagina, but I talk about it all night for two hours. <laughs> so let me tell you, young. If you're something. 14 and drinking beer, if you're old enough to do that, <laughs> you're old enough for the pap smear. There you go. Nice. Will. Yeah. You're hey. you're 14. What's up, young yeah. Will? I've been having. First of all, I just want to say to Adam, I love you. You're great. Thank you. Hey, Will, whatever you're going to say, I, I'm already having trouble believing him. Yeah, I know. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Will. But why don't you just tell, tell Adam he's great? What? Uh, uh, what would you say? All right. What's the problem? Um, the past few nights, I've been having wet dreams about guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're good, gay. Good times, buddy. You, Adam? Yeah, think about me. 
Oh. There we go. See, how'd you, you call that you one? You said it to pick out? Uh-huh. Because you can, if, if they've got something significant, you can feel it. Yeah. And if you don't feel it, it's like, why are you calling? Right. Yeah. Plus. That was great. Thanks for the call. Plus, um, you know, you hate to do the uh, profiling on this show, <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> but I, I understand when the cops do it, because anytime a 14-year-old kid <laughs> calls this show male 14, it's like Shaky. the likelihood of the bogoosity factor <laughs> goes through the roof. Am I right? Yeah. 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 Well, listen, 16 I, is sort of the threshold. I, I know people don't like profiling, <laughs> but it really, it's it's not a bad plan hey, if look, you think look, about look, it. 15-year-old Maria, real call. Not, not going to be not a bogus, bogus call. Yeah. Unless so her, unless her boyfriend's there. You don't want to talk to her? talk to her. She was on from Philly with Oh, the, that's right. We just with did. With the beer in the smear. That's right. That's such yeah. a great, great poem. John, back. thank you. John, you're 26. What's up? Hi. Um, I'm a compulsive gambler. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I've been going to GA um, a lot. Good for you. And um, I'm studying medical school in the fall. Oh, boy. And um, I just heard... Where? Where? Um, I don't really want to say if that's all right. But, I mean, are you going to be in the proximity of gambling institutions? Mm, I, I'll be... I mean, these days it's all going the to web. U- UNLV. Yeah, I was going to say, that's Vegas it is. If you're in Vegas, uh, transfer. Bad idea. Yeah. I just, um, I can't... Go to Arizona. Now Arizona's got them, too. Well, listen, and there's there's lottery tickets in every state. There's Indian the, reservations. The web. I mean, the web now. There's uh, uh, river boats. You can anywhere now. Right. right. But it, it's, it's uh, just my concern, John, is that it's... Being in that kind of proximity, you're going to be under very high levels of stress. Your ability to regulate your emotional world is going to be sort of challenged. Right. If you you know if you're three blocks from the Vegas Strip, it's like you know if you're a heroin addict living in a shooting gallery or something. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's just, no just, point just, in putting just, yourself in yeah. that position to to screw up again. But uh, be that as it may, let's talk more about what you can do. Uh, how, how did you have a sponsor? Uh, I don't currently have a sponsor. No. Did Did you have a sponsor? Uh, I'm, I'm in the process of getting one. All right. Oh, so the, the the process of recovery. Well, what do you is, get at GA? Like uh, Jimmy the Greek or no, something? No. Who, who, who sponsors you get, that? You get a, well, somebody who's had at least five years in the program, mm-hmm. preferably. Is that what it is, Con? Well, it depends on the drug and situation. Right. I mean, you could do two years, I suppose, with GA. But uh, and you want to get a sponsor, and then the recovery process is something that goes on in the context of the relationship with the sponsor. Going to meetings is the sort of very, very, very minimal part of the recovery process. It's important. It's rehearsal. It gives you structure. It gives you support. But the sponsorship and that relationship and the step work is what actually causes the healing. Okay? Right. So go do the step work, and you better do it very uh, intensively because, uh, what? you know, it's going to be hard to prioritize this when you're in medical school. What would you gamble on? Can I guess? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, my game is blackjack and craps. I see. Well, that that's good in the sense that if you stay, Away. like I just wrote down two names, um, Ithaca and Oswego. Those are a couple <laughs> of schools in upstate New York. There's nothing. You couldn't even pitch pennies over there. Or you could go to any of the schools of where I'm from, North Carolina. You don't find any gambling. Well, what's the question, John? We're sort of talking oh, ahead of it. Um, there's a new drug that was just re- uh, just approved for gamblers called naltrexone. Yeah, don't don't count on it. Don't count. I've, I've been using naltrexone for years for addicts, and it's. Uh, mildly effective at best. You, it does not in any way replace the recovery process. It's, oh, an, he, it's an adjunct. He is calling from Nevada. I just noticed that. I wasn't yep. even looking. Hey, Vegas. John. Mm-hmm. Really, it, I, I swear if your game is blackjack and, and you know, parlor type gambling games, you just, you've got to get out of that environment. Right. right. It, it, it would be good, you know, you, you, it, you you're going down a, an interesting path. Now, Traxone is a, a, a good idea if you're going to be in an otherwise sort of challenging environment like li- living in Las Vegas or Reno or something and then you may need some affect management uh, medication uh, so I definitely think a psychiatrist who is very familiar with addiction would be worthwhile all right let's just say hi to Jack Jack yeah you're uh, 16 yeah you you wet your bed yeah I got a little problem all right I'm, I'm gonna cure this I was a, a bed wetter late late into life too uh-huh all right. Again, I, I'm marginally accepting of Jack's yeah, I, <laughs> veracity. I, I don't really believe me either, but... Uh, but you have the answer. I have the answer yeah, anyway. All right, all right. And there's other people listening who wet the bed, all right. and they could use this advice. Jamie Presley is our guest tonight. She is uh, going to be upcoming in uh, Tom Katz and uh, Joe Dirt. Mm-hmm. Now, Tom Katz coming out Friday, Joe Dirt. Friday, uh, next April weekend. 4th or something like that, yeah. All right, we'll take ourselves a little break. We'll be back with uh, Jack and his uncooperative penis after this. Hey, Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. 
And here comes Jamie Presley. Jamie's in uh, Tom Katz. You can also uh, find her Jack and Jill. Also, you can see her uh, coming up in Joe Dirt. Dirt. Yeah, and we got to talk about the fact that I just shot the Dave Matthews video. Oh, oh. yeah. We are talking about that. Oh, my God. Before the show. Now, so It's so... Wow. Dave <laughs> Dave Matthews is totally straight. I've heard from uh, he Jamie. He is married. His wife is pregnant and in medical school. She's in medical school. And yeah. I was saying I swore the guy was gay uh, two weeks ago. Thank God it wasn't on the air, true. That you, you, been... you said he was crazy and gay. No, uh, how <laughs> dare you. <laughs> he said he was not. No, I thought the guy was bi. I thought that was his deal. I thought no. everyone thought that. He's bisexual. I had no <laughs> He's idea. He's bisexual. Uh, oh, who? David Allen Greer? No, that was Andy Dick. Oh, was uh, that? Andy Dick is yeah. definitely, yeah. Well, yeah. Was that Andy Dick? <laughs> Jesus Christ in heaven! That's, that's Andy Dick. Him. But was the he other one sexual? Yeah, that was that's Andy him. Dick yeah. too. Sure. Oh, good times. All right. Well, the point is, is, is Jamie did his new video, the space between, right from the new CD. It's really, really amazing. And what's the it. turnaround time on a video? They can get it out pretty you know, fast. Normally, right? they can get it out, you know, within two weeks. But this one's going to take five weeks because Dave Myers, who directs the majority of the new good videos this, mm -hmm. these days, like you know, with all the big guys, he's really great in post with special effects and all the stuff he does it all himself and he's really amazing at it so it's going to be about five weeks because they're doing some really cool stuff like really moody you know and how did you get involved in it <clears throat> well i actually at the janet jackson tribute three weeks ago my publicist introduced me after the show to dave myers because i'm such a huge fan of the dave matthews band she knew he was directing the next video i met him we got along really well and i said when i met him i said tell me you're doing track number three and he's like, I'm doing track number three. And I said, no, really. Track number three, space between. He said, I'm serious. I'm doing track number three. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm doing it too. Huh. And he said, what? I said, no, I have to do it. Well, but then he said, what do you know about Dave Matthews? And I schooled him on the whole, everything about Dave Matthews and the band and his music. and how, Not gay. Yeah. Track number three on every CD is always his, you know, number one. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big fan. And because I was so passionate about the song and, and the band, he rewrote the treatment and put me in it. Hmm. And what what part do you play? Um, actually, my part it's 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 really beautiful the way it's shot. It's I'm in the water, walking in the water with my child, with a baby in, in my clothes, and you don't know if I'm going to kill us both or if I'm going in to baptize, like christen her. You don't know right. what you can't really tell what's going on. But in the beginning, I go in to to I'm a young mother who had a baby too early, and I'm trying to kill us both. And then it starts raining, and she has this revelation that that's not exactly, you know, the rain stops her from doing it, and she ends up walking out and, you know, walking towards the sun or whatever. Well, where did you shoot it? We shot it in Orlando uh, on, you know, everything's Disney. So there was uh, one of the farms or whatever. We There's a big lake or a river, and we shot it right there in the, uh, in the river. And uh, or whatever it is. Dave Matthews didn't talk about men at all. <laughs> no, he, I swear he is. Give it up, Adam. Yeah. He's a, he needs to do Saturday Night Live. He is the funniest person. Wow. Absolutely amazing guy. Really, really Man. down to earth, normal kind of guy. I was praying he was gay because women love that guy. And I, it's, it's, uh, his, you know, you know, it's a, great about his music or what I think people respond to is everybody thinks they're the only Dave Matthews fan. Right. Yeah, it's there's, so true. There's, there's 200 million people who think they're the Dodgers only Dave Matthews. They're not Matthews. even, they're not even uh, coming. The, the tour starts in uh, like April 21st or something. Dodger State, and that's in Virginia. Dodger Stadium is already sold out. I know. For four weeks after he starts the tour. And, you know... The it, entire Dodger Stadium. Could you imagine? For Dave Matthews. For Dave Matthews. Been around, he's been around a long time. Yeah, yeah, he's been around for like 10 years. He was playing at all the universities in South Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina when they first started out with Hootie, Darius, uh, Hootie and the Blowfish or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool that they're, you know, yeah. as big as they are. Well, you know... Uh, He's for, a great writer. And, and you know, and then we're going on because Dave Matthews isn't, would never come on the show. So I don't want to go on about him too long. But there's many examples and, and people get kind of jaded in this business about all these sort of posers and crampy boy bands and all how bad music is and how it's all about looks mm -hmm. and who you know and He's everything. not that at all. But here's a guy who's actually just good and people respond to him because he's I mean, good. his name is Dave. His name's Dave. You know, Dave. he's like a normal guy. That's right. Who's next? Jack? Yeah. Okay. So, Jack, we don't believe, but he's got a good question. Well, he wets his I'm bed. I'm serious. I, I do. How often do you wet your bed? Like, two times, three times a week, not that many times. And is that down from 
something, no, let's say, like a few, few years ago? No, like, it's never been like this. It just started this past Oh, it just started. Yeah. Is it from, like, a dream? Because I know when I was younger, like, when I was, like, seven, I wet the bed a couple times because I'd have a dream. I was so tired, though, that I wouldn't get up. I dreamt that I was going to the restroom. Right. And then I would just go in the bed, and I never really... <laughs> is that what it is, or is it... I don't remember. Like, I haven't had a dream for, like, years. I don't remember anything, so I don't think... You it's have. Like, you just don't remember it. Yeah. Quit smoking pot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you will. I mean, if you're really tired and you really got to go and you got to dream you're standing in front of a urinal as a guy, you can you can get going. Yeah. I've done that in my adult life. <laughs> Lord knows I have. Jack, are you on any medication? No, none. I mean, I was on, I'm on Accutane, but... Mm, that's well, all. you wonder if the Accutane could be doing this. Uh, yeah, I started like six months ago. Right, what? Yeah, but I wonder if the Accutane can be doing this in some strange way. I mean, Accutane is pretty powerful medicine. It can change a lot of things in your system. Do you yeah. wake up when you wet the bed? Uh, sometimes, but like, like, okay, yeah, well, yeah. let me do some math here. What time do you normally go to bed? Like 10, 10, 30, 10, 10, 30. Yeah. And, uh, when you woke up the time you wet your bed, what time was it? Probably like two, two, like Perfect. two in the morning. Yeah. That's right. That's the Corolla schedule. Yeah. So here's what you need to do. Yeah. Uh, you need to get yourself a little, okay, here's, okay. I want to tell everybody how to live. I know this is a part timer. of the plan. Buy an egg timer. And let me tell you the two uh, things. Is that where you're going? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to do this with their life. A, they need to put a lock on their bedroom door. Mm -hmm. Because there's all those stories where people wake up and some shadowy figure standing at the foot of their bed. It doesn't have to be a deadbolt. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. It can literally be a $5 barrel bolt that you get at the hardware store and screw in with a couple of three-quarter inch wood screws in your door jam. Just enough so that somebody can't quietly open your door while you're asleep and either murder you or catch you whacking off. Or both. So, everyone needs to put a lock on their bedroom door and lock it at night before they go to bed. Good idea. Number two, and please, if, if I had a nickel for every time some kid called the show because he was horrified because he saw his parents getting it on when he was seven years old because he yeah. stumbled into the bedroom, <laughs> you need to lock your bedroom door, single, married, whatever. Lock it before you go to bed. Number two, everyone needs one of those $10 digital egg timers. <laughs> if you want to take a nap and you only got a half hour, you set that thing. If you if you got to take a leak at 2 a.m., you go to bed at 10.30, you set it for three hours, it goes off at 1.30 in the morning, you get up and take yourself a leak, and then get back into bed. So what oh, you're saying... Thank boy. you. What you're saying, though, is that you have him get up, wake up, and go pee before the time yeah, that he normally it It's pretty simple math. Make sure you I go mean, before you go to bed and you, wake up and yeah, get up, too. Yeah, if you take a leak before you hit the hay and you're, taking, you're wetting yourself at, at 2 a.m., you know, do the math. And I think the Accutane may be having some effect on it. Accutane is very sort of protean in how it affects people. I, I, I was actually on it for a while, and I got like knock, what's called paroxysmal nocturnal well, dyspnea. You peed on me that twice short, right in the I studio. Peed, that wasn't pee. And I, I was, I was uh, short <laughs> of breath. I was short of breath in the middle of the night. And all kinds of strange, you know, strange dreams, strange this. And it affects your mood. Yeah, my girlfriend tired. was on it. She got off because it was just such a, like, it's it was a, almost like an antidepressant. It was affecting no, her in a really it's, weird it's, way. It's a, it's a, not antidepressant, no, but, but a I mean, it was like an app, app an actual makes you depressed. Yeah, yeah. Drew went from uh, I remember he went from boring to super extra boring. <laughs> the year living dangerously. <laughs> Max. Yeah. You're 26. Yeah. What's up? Hey, uh, I just wanted to uh, get uh, I guess all your advice on uh, uh, what's the best way about uh, persuading uh, my wife uh, to have anal sex. Oh, I'm not touching it because you couldn't persuade, persuade me with millions. You couldn't touch I think I could lure you in. How? How was that? Well, I, I start with the ether rag. <laughs> That's my first move. Then I go to the duct tape. Yeah, some women are into this and some women are absolutely not. Yeah. And ne'er the tween shall meet. Why, why is it that you're so uh, adamant about having anal sex? Well, Adam, it's just something that uh, that I have yeah. to enjoy. He has to check uh, off the I've list. Been with, I've right. Someone in the past who's enjoyed it as well, and I, I, she, I don't know. I guess I haven't been very upfront with her about it, but uh, I was hoping, you know. Well, Max, do you do you think she might enjoy it? Does she? I I, I don't know. I, in past, it's been a good experience, and I I was hoping that maybe you know after if we could get into it, she'd enjoy it. But. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something. Every woman I've ever met and every woman you've ever met can fake an orgasm. Even the woman you were having anal sex with before, even though it might have been great and she seemed like great. 
we don't get anything from it, really. So, some women do. Some women do, but, but it's, it's very imagine, rare. It's, it's very rare. It's hard to imagine how. It's hard to imagine how. Yeah, because we don't have the same glands you guys do up there. So. But even with those glands, it, it, that's not an appeal. You don't want so. anything going up you, you know, that way. It, women typically don't want anything well, going up minute. them. Slow down. Way. Slow down. That's a, you don't have to make such a blanketing statement. Drew, you wouldn't mind something you, you, going up you that you way. You actually sound you? offended. At yeah, it. I know. He was very offended by How that. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you hi hi I hypothesize on behalf of my hamsters. anus? Right. Oh, your anus. Oh, my I, thought, anus. I thought you were talking about women's anus. Oh, yeah. No, I know. I was... well, your listen, anus. Like, so you would like something there, up your token. Naturally. There's yeah. something up there now. It's your wallet. Oh, God. You want to get it back? Oh, okay, God. here's the deal. Mm -hmm. 90 Five percent of women do not like it. Absolutely hate it. Hate it. Absolutely yeah. Not. And then five percent are love it or kind of into it, and then one percent love it. But a lot of the part of them being into it is that they like getting I mean, the man very, off. They like that it gets their Listen, man off, so yeah. they do it for that reason. Yeah, That's yeah. what gets them off. And and there's some women that are just crazy enough to enjoy it. Yeah. But here's the deal: you don't know. Hey, it's your wife. You can float the idea, but if she doesn't want to do it, don't you, don't pressure you, her. She will get back at you if you pressure her. Yeah, or you could say, try it once. If you don't like it, we'll never do it again. Right. right. And um, here's a bodily favorite perfume. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, make the whole thing smell a little better. Yeah, I'll put some on my penis. <laughs> I'll take a little break. Jamie Presley's here tonight. We'll be back after this. Neat. <laughs> Love line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Bill Maher in here tomorrow night. Done his show. I think between the two of us, we've done his show <laughs> 20 times. And, uh, I did yeah. it once and I had a ball. Yeah, we like his show. I love I, it. I would think. Uh, he has a bit part in Tomcats. <laughs> oh, he does? Yeah. Well, I forgot. He does. Talk to him. You can plug it uh, tomorrow night. That's Jamie Presley, by the way. Tom Cats is her uh, new film, which is coming out this Friday. And then uh, the next week after that, she'll be in uh, Joe Dirt. So uh, making the rounds. Also Jack and Jill. And uh, Temptation Island Reunion, Mighty Mighty Bostones, and um, a, a cavalcade of other stars coming in here. Andy Dick coming around. around. Of Andy When's Dick. he coming? Uh, next Monday. week. Next Monday. Yeah. Have you seen He's his new bisexual. Show? I'm on it. You're on it? Yeah, I did the opening. I saw so. you on it. What am I doing? You are uh, sitting there offering a sort of diagnosis on uh, Andy how nutty, how crazy he is. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute, on the first show, it was the first the show, but I think one? it's in the opening. Op am I in the opening? Or I, I didn't see the opening. I, I saw, saw the very. The I saw the first show. So I must. Mm -hmm. He is so funny in it. You know the Scared Straight program? Yeah. Where they take kids in. Did you see it? Yeah. He redid it and went off on the guy. You know what else? He's you. a great director. Really? He's, I mean, I had the such. I'd get anything out of me. Imagine that. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Cigar and store Indian. That's right. Better and, and, it was, and it was, <laughs> and he would just, he would just go. He just do forty takes, and just go into this, and this, try this, try that, and just have. And we're just uh, cracking up, having a great time. Having an actor be a director is great because you know directors that have never acted before don't really know how to no. talk to you. He's uh, he's definitely a talent, and his show I was, is. I funny. was thoroughly impressed. I really was. He'll be uh, in here to uh, plug it to death uh, next week. Alex. Yeah. You're fifteen. Yeah. What's up? Um. I've been uh, having a relationship with my girlfriend for about a year now, and um, about two weeks ago, before she moved away to Illinois, um, we had sex, and I guess something went wrong, and she called me two days ago. What do you mean something went wrong? With, with what? Like, I guess the common broke or something. H how do you guess that? How do you not know? Because she told me she's pregnant. Well, how did you not know it broke when you I were having know. Did you take the condom off? Yeah, but was we didn't check it. But normally, like, if you take the condom off and it's broken, the semen would have fallen out of it, or there wouldn't have been anything in it. How can you not tell? I don't know. I don't know. Like, when I ripped the thing, it may have nicked a little in the condom, I guess. Yeah, but why wasn't the... All right. Anyway, Listen, we so all she know says she's pregnant. After. But this this is this call doesn't hang together on many levels. Many levels. Why? What's what are the other levels? What, what, when did you have sex with her? About two weeks ago. All right. And she knows she's pregnant. How did she find out she was pregnant? Um, she called me. How did she find out she was pregnant? She got some test at like the drugstore or something. Well, how long does it take to find out if you're pregnant two, or not? Two weeks. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. All right. So now she's pregnant, and he, he, she says it's your child, right? Yeah. And what's her plan? Um, I don't know. I she was crying, and I. I'm scared because... How old are you again? I'm 15. How old is she? 
she's 15. Okay. Uh, were you guys going to continue the relationship after she moved away? Yes, what she wants to do, but I don't see what the point is. Yeah, man. Well, if you have a baby, there's a big point. Yeah, there is a point now. Well, do you think that she may be saying this to try to get you, Lure you there? re-involved in the relationship? Yeah, I was totally re- involved in the relationship. I love her. No, do All you right. th- do you think that she said these things Hold to try to get you to come? Alex, what, what, what's your uh, first language? Uh, Where are you English. from? Spain? English? Really? No. I was adopted, so I don't really know, like what my heritage is or whatever. I'm thinking German or... Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. All right. So, do you want to be out of the relationship? I mean, I don't understand. I know we're not talking about pregnancy right now, but she moved away to Illinois, right? Yeah. And it doesn't seem like there's going to be any way to continue the relationship, you, you being in San Francisco. Yeah. And is she a little bit nutty? Do you think this is the kind of thing she may be making up? No, she's not making it up. Okay. Did, what does she want to do? Does she want to have, have the child? She. Uh, we didn't really talk about it that much. Um, she said she had to talk to her parents and tell them. And I was like, oh, God, I have to tell my parents, too. And like, I, well, I, think, I think, quite frankly, if you guys were you know, adult enough to have sex and if this, the condom did, in fact, break, then yeah. you need to uh, be man enough to go to wherever it is she is and talk to her and her parents and discuss what needs to go on. It's going to do right as mo- You know pay. what? you got to tell your parents. Get a I'm, job. You're having a, if you're having a child, you're going to have to do that anyway. Yeah. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait I a have minute. a job, so. Well, so Jamie, Jamie's got up. some uh, tough love here. Yeah, what's he going to do? Sometimes Sell you got to do that. No. Okay, but hold on. He, he's 15. He's in Frisco. She's in Chicago somewhere. And this is going to be tough. I mean, he may not have the resources to get out there. I think uh, he needs to talk to her about what her plan is. I mean, she could be having an abortion. She could give the child up for adoption. There's other alternatives yeah, here. The, it makes sense to give the child up for adoption. That would be a very courageous and reasonable thing to do on behalf Absolutely. of the child. Uh, we'll give you the Planned Parenthood phone number if you want to talk to somebody. It's 1-800-230-PLAN, P-L-A-N, 230-PLAN. And then we're going to see what her parents want to do about this. Since I, good, I think it's great that she's telling her parents. That's a good thing. Absolutely. I still have my doubts, frankly, that this is his child. Awfully quick, no rupture condom. It just doesn't all really hang together for me. Right. But be that as it may, uh, you may have to be supporting this child. And if she does decide to keep the child, you will be obliged to support it financially until he's 18. Also, how accurate are the tests that you buy from the they're, store? They're, uh, very good. Really? Yeah. Elizabeth? Yes. So it was a good angle. I would have tried to work that angle, yeah. too. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. It turns out they're good. Uh, what's up there? You're 14. Yes. Um, last night... Um, um, my boyfriend put on the condom the wrong way, mm-hmm. and then he, he, he realized that, and he took it off and put it on the right way, and then we had sex, and I was wondering what the chances of me getting preg- pregnant from that, because I think a little semen got on the tip of it. How do you Ooh. how do you put it on inside inside out? Yeah. How did he even do that? Yeah, he didn't get all the way. I just sort of got it over the head a little. Started bit. Yeah. it, but you started yeah. having you, you started having sex with it on. No, no, backwards. no. Then he no. flipped it around. Oh, oh. And Put it on. And could the could the he, tip of his penis contacting the inner, the outer surface? Right. He could have been. Some semen he could have been leaking. Right? I see. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's a theoretic possibility, but highly unlikely. It's, it's because um, I just got my period today, and I was just wondering good. if there's any possibility, like right now. Well, it's not zero, but it's nearly zero. Okay. You can get a pregnancy test in two weeks if you have any concerns. Okay. All right? All right, thank you. All right, baby. Good times. Okay. 14, sweetie P. Yeah, Let's I know. Slow it down a little bit, all right? We could okay. be gambling on her. Mm, how old's your boyfriend? 14. Okay. Jesus okay, Christ, I'm going to do. It, I'm gonna tell you what to do what I did. Go to Planned Parenthood. I was 14, and I went, and not even because I was having sex. I just, the thought of having a child at that age made me cringe, and if I did want to have sex... Wait a minute. You had to be having sex. No, I had had sex, but I went away to Japan. Right. And, and when I was there, a lot of us girls, I didn't have sex while I was there. Sure. So I was 15, I'm sorry. Uh... We, because of the time change and the whole thing, a lot of us didn't have our periods for months while we were there. Really? Yeah, and it had I wasn't having sex or anything, so when I came back, just because it scared me so bad, I went and put myself on the pill sure at Planned Parenthood. The fact that they were telling you you were fat and you weren't eating? Yeah, no, I actually started, I gained weight when I went over there because I ate, so I love the food. Who did you go there with? 
Did you? I went alone. I had a contract off at Saint Ayam. How do you do that? I mean, how do you? I've been an old soul since the, the day house. I was born. I was good. I went, had an apartment with a girlfriend. It was from Georgia. We both worked with the same Your agency. Your parents let you do that? I was emancipated at fifteen. Why? I lived on my own since I was fifteen. My parents went through a divorce after 21 years when I was 14, and my oh. mother and I moved to California Yeesh. because I was modeling and flying back and forth so much, mm -hmm. and we're from a small town, and it was easier. And mm -hmm. uh, I ended up going to Japan, and I went to Italy and lived there when I was 19. And How does that work after 21 years? I, you know what? It, the last 12 years of it were not... It, my mother married him when she was 18. Back in the day, you just do that. You know, like, they did that, and they didn't know any better. My father... So when they divorced, they were your age after 21 years of marriage. Holy Christ. Yeah. Uh, they're both remarried now, happily remarried, I think, whatever. But, I, I, just, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, like, uh, I, I was nervous about slumber parties at 15, down the street kind of thing. I couldn't imagine going to Japan. At, uh, it was party. scary. I had a... <laughs> with an apartment. At, I got up and took the train every day to work, and it was like I was an adult. I just did what I had to do. I went and worked and came back and went to the grocery store and lived like a normal adult would at 15. And, uh, not, I won't Learned be, how to speak Japanese, did the whole thing. What about uh, education? I mean, not that I got any when I was in high school, and I'm sure you were getting more education than anybody who was Traveling, I learned more than I did in school. Right, but I mean, how was that okay with whoever What the happened was that because be I was emancipated, mm -hmm. um, and we did that, but I wasn't divorced forcing my parents in any way. We did that so that I could go to Japan because we thought at the time we were told that I couldn't go alone at 15 mm -hmm. unless I was emancipated. So we did that and then we found out I didn't need to be. Mm -hmm. But it ended up helping me out in the end anyway because I Six. lived on my own. However, I came back, went into independent studies because I went during the second semester of my sophomore year in high school. Uh -huh. Went into independent studies did it until I was a junior in high school, asked my uh, English teacher, who was a good friend of mine, how long is it going to be till I graduate? Because you can only do one class at the time, and each class took a minimum of six weeks. Mm -hmm. She said 19, possibly, and I said, okay, I'm out, and I went to college. And my uh, major was sports medicine, fitness specialist with a dance yeah. minor, and I didn't get to finish, so. How cool are you, though, coming back from Japan in the 11th grade, and, uh, hey, kids, what's up? How'd the football team I'll tell go? you, it was a hell of an experience, but I wouldn't have, yeah. I was like, so I was uh, eating blowfish and on the uh, catwalk. <laughs> what, what's going on over here? How'd the team do? I showed okay. my age not being able to use chopsticks, though. That was the one thing I couldn't do. You guys do play a little softball and do some catfishing while I was going? <laughs> Everything okay? Craw crawfish? Yeah. <laughs> I did blow with De Niro on a weird <laughs> chat. What's going on? How, what's going on over here? <laughs> oh. How'd the uh, snow dance go? Is that fine without me? Jim look good? <laughs> All right. Katie? Yeah, you can push it. Oh, buttons. yeah, there you go there. <laughs> Katie, you're 17. Yeah. What's up? Um, I had a question for Jamie. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a dancer, and I was wondering if um, you had been a dancer previously in your life, or was it because of Jack and Jill that you dance? Or My mother's a dance teacher, and I've been dancing for 21 years. I started when I was three, and yeah. that's been my life That's since I was three. Came from, exactly. Eating disorder. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, but that only lasted a, a month because I, I love food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dancing and eating. When I, when I go into the robot, people start vomiting. So I know, <laughs> I do know that it works that way. How long have you been dancing? Um, well, I'm not really dancing right at the moment, but I danced for nine years of my life. Well, that's good. Yeah, I love it, and I really need to get back into it. Why aren't you dancing now? Um, because I haven't been dancing since sixth grade when I moved up to Sacramento. Um, I used to live down in Southern California. Oh, I see. No dancing in Sacramento. There's dancing everywhere you go. Illegal. In what is that? Like the Footloose like, school it's not over like there? Good. It's there's no good dance school. How old are you? Down. 17. You know what you can do? What I did when I was 7, I mean, I went to college when I was 17, but um, you can actually go if there's a junior college anywhere around. Mm -hmm. oh. If they have a uh, performing arts department, which the majority of the schools do, especially junior colleges, yeah. um, you can go and actually take classes as, an, as a, just, you go and you pay to be a student just in the classes, but it's not something that goes on your uh, final record as a college student. You can actually just go and pay to take the classes. Oh, really? That sounds cool. Yeah, you should do that. That's what I did. It's a great, great experience awesome. to be there with all those great dancers. It pushes you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right there, Katie. Thank you. All right, thanks. Good Bye. times. Get that Bye. Adam. Great dancers at junior college. No, no. Well, no, no. They can't afford it. Junior college it is fine not. for dancing and softball, and uh, it's good to get you into the bigger schools. Good to score. If you don't have the grades, and you know, coming out of and, you know, high school. Yeah, 
Yeah. But did you, did you go off to a bigger school? No, because I started working and I couldn't. Right. That's I went for two years Nobody and ever goes on to a bigger school. <laughs> that's my only problem. Three of my college. friends did. The, in theory, it's good. Now, were they Asian? No. Hmm. <laughs> they usually go straight to the, the that, universities. That's what I'm saying. But some, <laughs> yeah. sometimes they just get off the boat and they gotta, they got to sweat, sweat Learn it out in junior college right. for a year or two. Mickey? Uh, Mikey? Mikey. Oh, Mikey, I'm sorry. Hey, how you doing? You're 20, what's up? Almost 20. My birthday's in two days. Anyway. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Um, Jamie, I just wanted to say that I love your voice and... Thank you. You're super hot. <laughs> um, I was wondering if there's any way that I can get like an autograph or anything like that. If I ever see you, absolutely. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys don't have like a... Like a, I don't know, a fan club or anything like that? Um, like, we're actually working on one right now. Really? But uh, if you write to the WB, if you go online to, uh, you know, the w WB dot com and uh -huh. go through all the shows, go to where it says Jack and Jill. Right. And uh, you send in a request for that, or you can actually write the WB and send right. it to the Jack and Jill production the, office. The um, the email address is um, is dubba dubba dubba. No, it's it's dubba 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 um, yeah, Throw I have like this like keloid scar on my back, uh -huh. and I was wondering what can I do to get rid of it. How big is it? Um, it's like less than a dime. It's like I mean, it's pretty small. What's it from? Um, I guess an acne scar. Mm mm mm. How long you had it? Um, maybe over a year, I guess. What color are you? I'm Asian. Is yeah. it, is it How dark? do the Asians do with the keloid? Some do. Well, white people are keloid too, but uh, sometimes with darker pigmented skin, the keloids will get even darker than your. your right. Your skin. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot darker than you know, my regular skin. Or they can be excised. They can be removed by a plastic surgeon. Sometimes they can inject steroids into it. Or you yeah, I was going to say my my girlfriend had them inject. What what kind of? It's a cortisone. Cortisone. Yeah. yeah. Can they? What about just uh, putting, like, vitamin E on it or something? Mm, it doesn't do it. It tends not to. Keloid is a keloid. And really, if it's if it's a problem, they, they'll actually, the plastic surgeon will go back and take it out, try to take it out. The problem is, obviously, you can read keloid again. You should just go to the dermatologist and have them look or, at it. Right, or a plastic surgeon. A plastic surgeon, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, tell people you got shot there. I mean, it Sounds that, much know, cooler. Yeah, you don't go, that big old shit. <laughs> well, this is as big as the one I had on my ass, but it was big. <laughs> Thankfully, the hairs covered the one on my ass. I mean, maybe I've talked, maybe I've said too much. Jeff? Yeah. Jeff, you're 14? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to say, Adam, you're awesome. Thanks. What, what I love you, Adam. Don't believe me. Yeah. yeah. You're hilarious. Thanks, Jeff. All right, is that it? Yeah. Drew, you're a good man, too. All right, Jeff, take care. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a question, though. I was laying in bed a couple nights ago, uh -huh. and my stepmom came in, uh -huh. and she told me that my dad was gone and she like started rubbing me and mm -hmm. what was she wearing she was wearing a thong and a bra oh my god that's a damn no. lie and you know it <laughs> he's lying he's I, I, I tell you, well I, i'll tell you why you're lying because your story would have started entirely differently we went oh my god my stepmom walked in a, with a thong and a bra on no because she's only 29 and i think she's really hot uh... and i don't know what to do what did she do to you she just came in and she sat down on my bed and she like we did have one of these that was real one time, remember? And we told the guy to tell his dad, and the dad beat the crap out of him. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Well, my, dad, my dad's in the military, so he's off Ooh. a lot. I see. Now, she started rubbing on you, and then what? Um, she was just like, your, your dad's gone. And I was like, yeah, I know. And she's like, do you want to go into my bedroom? And I didn't know what to do, so I just told her no. And then she's like, okay, well, if you want to, I'll be in here. And she left. Mm -hmm. Just say no, my friend. Yeah. But, she, I don't know what to do because she's really hot and I like her a lot. Well, you know what? How old are you? I'm 14. You're 14. She's 29. She's married to your father. Listen, You're not on. the Jerry Springer show. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah, but you guys don't understand. Oh, no. That. Yes, we do. Yeah, we, yes, do. we do. It's and, your hormones and, raging. And 14-year-old males, please. Every single one's been bogus. Every single one. Okay. All right, no more helping young people. I agree with Drew. Well, no, they're just it's bogus calls. But be that as it may, uh, they, they, no, they, they, they could have. No, listen. All right. Why would he persist like that? I don't. We know. gave him clear advice. Well, but you don't understand. Well, who who wants to turn down Tang at fourteen? 
But that's the point. Nobody. It, the, the actual fortune in that experience would be flipped. Absolutely out. scared. Yeah. Stri- I mean, there's yeah. no. All right, way. but let me give you. But let me let me let me play devil's advocate here. Let's say it's a bogus call. Would he have said that he just told her he didn't want to do anything and send her back to her bedroom? Yeah. I mean, maybe yeah, yeah. if it's a bogus call. Because he was call, scared, yeah. He says he got himself a BJ. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying if you're fabricating, you might as well get the BJ. Mm. That's all you I'm saying. You want to push my details some more? Mm. I can break them. All right. Jeff? What? Jeff? Yeah. Okay. When's your dad come back from out of town? Uh, I don't know. You Probably have, a day. You have no idea? No. Where is why, he? Why is it you don't know? Because he's off. He leaves sometimes for a while, and you know he never really. Where is he now? Where sure. is he now? He's in the on a ship. On a ship, he comes back in one day. Uh, probably, maybe I don't know. How long's he been gone? Uh, about three days. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah. He's, he's having trouble with his. Yeah. Oh, listen, a guy, a kid who's the son of a, a military guy knows uh, daddy's schedule when he's shipping out, yeah. when he's coming back. They don't, and, they don't yeah. go on ships for. Three days. Sometimes they just... Yeah, it takes a while to get somewhere on a ship. Three days ain't good. Sometimes they just do a little whale watching in the harbor <laughs> yeah, and then come back. Yeah, they just go out for the hell it's of part it. of the new softer side, uh, Army of <laughs> One. <laughs> Jamie? Hello? You're 14? Yeah. What's up? Um, what are the effects of mushrooms? Do you get real high? <laughs> I know, but like, um, like... Do they do anything to your body? You mean like the side effects or yeah. what happens when you yeah. do mushrooms? Yeah, the, they, they are, like other hallucinogenics, seem to be damaging to the brain mood centers. But oh. but people, they, they don't really know enough because people don't really do enough of them. That's <laughs> true. So we'd that, like people to start doing more of them so we can get some definitive studies. Get some data here, right yeah. There, Drew? No, that, that's no. in fact the case. And it's also rare to see people doing just mushrooms. They're doing mushrooms, pot, and acid usually, or mushrooms, pot, and speed. At the same time? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Hey. Really? All right, Adam. Yeah. Um, there was this person at our church, uh-huh. and you'll never guess what they did. They pooped in the toilet, and they left a humongous log. Yeah. <laughs> and it went flush down. Well, it, yeah. It was like like the mason jar thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> the mason jar. I, I, I don't know. If she's trying to. She's trying no. to get the mason <gasps> jar in. I'm serious. No, as big as a mason jar. Right? She's she just oh, delighted oh, trying to share with you. I see, I see. Well, you know, they say uh, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. So uh, it, it seems, listen, I'm atheist and I wouldn't crap up a church. Y- y- you know what I'm saying? Who wants to go anywhere but their own house? Well, that's, that's a chick thing. I, that's yeah, a, that, I guess it that is. is a chick uh, let me tell you, uh, we were talking about the, the man show uh, earlier on, and here's basically how it goes. Uh, the man show has uh, base, uh, there's about 50 people in our building and uh, two, three toilets. Uh, two men's rooms and, and all- one one lady's room. <laughs> and let me tell you the difference. I because I was doing a little social experiment. The <laughs> upstairs, the upstairs bathroom, the ladies' room. The upstairs bathroom. Is that the ladies' room or not? No, it's not. Drew. The upstairs men's room. Okay, I'll. Okay, Drew, uh, is there's you- a men's room and a ladies' room. There's two, there's two men's rooms and a and a ladies' room and one ladies' room. Okay, so. could you shut up, please? Let me finish. The upstairs bathroom is where all the riders go, and there's nothing but guys up there. And there's probably a eh, handful of riders and a, some some producers and some guys like this. Probably about twelve, thirteen guys upstairs. That bathroom, which is closest to my office, is funkified twenty four seven. It cannot be used. Jordan. There's either somebody in there. Jordan is in there moving one of his uh, BLTs minus the <laughs> minus the L because he's like uh, he, every every goddamn sandwich that guy eats is nothing but like just bacon and mayonnaise. Yeah, but he's anyway. Somebody is either on the pot or getting off of the pot. You cannot use it. Now, the downstairs bathroom, where there's a, a couple of guys and mostly women, is always in great shape. Guys will go number two. Uh, at the job, and women, they'll wait until they get home. And, well, guys will save it up for their own territory, too. I think so they'll, pr- they'll preserve we, the that's email. That's true. Territory. We have guys coming in and cramping on weekends <laughs> just, to, just, to, just to stake their claim. And, and I will always remember uh, standing at that downstairs bathroom. There's a urinal, the train there. And mm-hmm. when you stand and when you're looking straight ahead is where at least 20 guys have gone. Yeah. Oh, God. Against the wall. Uh, 
uh, they cleared did, their nose. Did the snot rocket. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. in a different... Snot I mean, it's just all... Pow, pow, pow. The wall looks like it's been just blasted. <laughs> we're, in a, uh. we're in another building now, but oh, uh, okay. yes, that was yes. Last year. I had to take... A, I actually had to take... Uh, I don't like to brag about it, but I had to take a leak in a coffee pot uh, <laughs> upstairs. What? In front of the riders <laughs> to make an example of uh, what, you know... I mean, I'm the big cheese there. Yeah. I can't head up uh. and have that bathroom a mess every time I go up there. <laughs> Bad times. All right, Jamie Presley's our guest. I hear she's leaving after you. You got to hang I'll around stay. one more break. I'll oh, totally good, stay. good times, baby. Good times. Good times. All right, we'll be back. Hey, 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 love line. I'm Adam Carolla. It's uh, Dan <laughs> over there. Phone or one eight hundred L V E one nine one. Jamie Presley's our guest tonight. Tom Katz is the name of her latest movie, which is coming out Friday, and then probably the Friday after that, Joe Dirt. She'll, uh, and Jack and Jill yeah. still airing on Wednesday nights, even though Temptation Island killed everybody. Well, now Temptation Island's gone, so uh, yeah. Jack's back. So now they've decided they're going to do the best of Survivor. Like, we can't win for losing. Oh, really? On <laughs> yeah. Wednesday? Oh. Yeah, it's great. Good, t- good times. You know, uh, I was picturing, <laughs> uh, I was looking at Drew in his uh, pajama bottoms, or his uh, these these sort of flannel sweats that uh, Ann and got us, yeah. and uh, I'm wearing mine tonight. Although I wear mine every night. He's <laughs> wearing his. And it really dawned on me the uh, state of my disheveledness when I was leaving my house on Friday. A guy, uh, Gary, a guy, carpenter friend, came over. I had some stuff lined up for him to do. He w- we were standing in my garage. I was kind of running late. And I said, uh, all right, so Gary, just pull the gate shut, turn the alarm on. You know what to work. The tools are in the basement, blah, blah, blah. And I go, I'm running late for work. And he goes, you're going to work? And I go, yeah, yeah, I got to go now. And he goes, but you're wearing your pajamas. (laughs) And I said... Uh, I got to work every day in my pajamas. Yeah, that's... And it James really, their pajamas, too. Really, yeah, I really, mean, I wear sw- live in sweats. Really dawned on me, though, that this this guy was yeah. a simple man, yeah. but he wanted to know why I was going to work in my pajamas. <laughs> it's different at 10.30 in the morning, too. It's like, uh, it seems oh, bizarre. The thing yeah. bizarre. Work, work. I have so oh, many... Oh, I go to work date? No, I'm sorry, not this job. You mean the man show? Yeah, I go to the man show in my pajamas, which was really... Uh, another thing that was uh, funny, or maybe just to me, is I did... Uh, we, we shot something where I had to wear pajamas yeah. and uh you just wore your normal clothes no i said <laughs> i said to everybody i go all right well i'm gonna go get changed back into my and then i paused and went uh, other pajamas <laughs> and then, then, I'm gonna, then we're gonna leave i like, own like uh, eight anyway. million outfits that have never been worn because i wear pajamas every day good times good baby. times well you know you're gonna get to work they're gonna put makeup on you and, hand and they're you gonna something dress to you wear. so what's the point point? and there's nothing worse than Really getting dressed. I mean, you know, the socks and the tight pants. You know, I like to wear tight pants. So <laughs> show the Peg ladies where jeans. I'm coming from. Yeah, and my high riding type boots that Absolutely. lace all the way up. <laughs> and, you know, my collared shirts and the whole thing with my, I wear dickies and things and ascots. You yeah, know. of course. Ascots. <laughs> and so the thing is, there's nothing worse than getting dressed and then really getting undressed again. Might as well just, I'd like to just go to work in my comforter with an erection. And drop it when I get there and put my clothes and makeup on. Yeah, yeah. might as well. Good Too time. bad that comforter can't be... It, it be, cannot be folded. It can't be folded. <laughs> well, it's folded like a taco shell. It gets folded. <laughs> it, you try to straighten yeah, it, it, it out, it cracks. It cracks apart like a right. taco shell, too. <laughs> yeah. It, it's seen better days. Um, Michelle. Hello? Michael. Oh, Michael. Man, I'm all over the place tonight. Michael, what's up? Hey, hey Jamie. Hey. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, Dr. Drew, got a question for you. Yeah. Um... This doesn't happen all too often, but after I urinate, um, when I'm all finished, sometimes I get a shooting pain mm-hmm. um, between, I guess, in the area between my anus and my testicles. Are you on a medication? No. And any history of any medical problems? No. In the recent, is this how long has this been going on for? It's it's actually technically been going on. I think I've you know for a couple of years. Well. But I, it only happens like once every maybe month or two. Yeah, it's sort of a bladder spasm, probably. Yeah. Can I be caused from straining too much? Yeah, it can be caused from prostate irritation. He might have other uh, sort of urethral irritation. But it's been going on a long time. It's probably not any sort of infectious problem. It's just one of those things some guys get. Yeah. You ride a bike? No, uh, I ride a motorcycle. But I wonder know. if that could be adding to it. You street street bike? Yeah. Hmm. You yeah. ride a lot? Uh, no, I haven't really because it's been cold lately, so no. <laughs> well, from now on, use a cup. <laughs> no, that won't work. <laughs> no, that it's, would it's, hurt it's, worse. It's, it's, it's the pudendal. It's the under. <laughs> it's on the, in between. All right, so what can he do? Not worry about it. 
All Drink right. lots of fluid. Pee frequently. Don't hold your urine for long, long periods of time. Good times. Steve? Yes. You're 27? Yes, and I'm a virgin. Really? Yeah. How come? I... Hey, can you, can you turn whatever's on in the background down, please? I can't get it. Moron. All right, did you do that? Yes. Okay, so wh why do you think you're a virgin? I know I am. <laughs> I know, but, but what, what is the cause of this virginity? Not getting laid? Right. I What's see. motivating that? I just can't get it. I can't get any. Why not, do you think? I, I don't know. I don't go out. I don't. I, I'm shy, extremely shy. Well, you seem to be answering your own question. Do you have like an anxiety problem where you, when you get in social situations, you're sort of overwhelmingly uncomfortable and anxious? Correct. Well, there's something called social anxiety disorder, social yeah. phobia, that uh, can be treated. You might want to see someone about that, make it so it's more comfortable for you to go amongst people so you can actually meet someone and maybe have some sort of relationship. What, what do you do for a living? I work at a body shop. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so you know that, bo that Bondo, the uh, hardening... No, I work in the paint. Oh, you're working the paint, yeah. You gotta give them a zit. Uh, yeah, ninety percent benzoyl peroxide on the uh, hardening, the catalyst. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, use that on my zit once. Hey, uh, you, you see, so you work around, you go outside, you, you live on your own. Yeah. In order to to get laid, though, you have to actually go out and meet people. So I think yeah. the best thing in the world is to I, go and speak with someone, a psychiatrist I I or a psychologist. Don't. I don't drink. I don't. Well, that's your problem. Yeah, but see, you may have a disorder that can be helped and treated. Yeah, and you're not going to meet any chicks at a body shop. Or in your house. Well, what kind of a doctor do I go to? Uh, uh, you can start with your regular doctor, but a psychiatrist would be the ideal person to see. Because there, there, there's good medication for social phobia now. All right, Steve. Okay, thank you. All right, good All right. times. Yeah, just talk to a psychiatrist and, uh, oh, good times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Should guys in body shops really be getting laid, though? And what you, do you want? Nine times out of ten, you hear that they're the ones always getting laid. Not necessarily yeah. by the big, best winners in the world, but, you know. Mm, no, no. But that is... Uh, that's a you think of the stereotypical hot mechanic working on a car, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you, you've been looking at too many calendars. I've been watching movies. Yeah, th <laughs> let me tell you, the body shop dudes, that's a different breed of cat over there. <clears throat> Think about that gig, by the way, just uh, in a spray booth all day, masking off cars, wets, you know, just pretty much prepping and spraying all day. Oh, that Bondo, all that toxic material. That's where you'd say yeah. tough times. Yeah, bad times. Bad times. Brian? Yo. You're 21. Hey there, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Um, I'm doing pretty good, thanks. Um, my problem... Well, actually, hold on just a second here. Dr. Drew, you are the, the smartest, most mag... Well, not magnificent, but... All right, Brian. Okay. No, go ahead. You can tell us next week he's a liar, so what, are, what, does he care, what do you care what he says? Oh, okay. What's your problem? Well, um, well I'm a com I don't know about compulsive liar, but see? See? sometimes, see. like... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't... I wasn't... Yeah, I wasn't uh, fibbing there, though. But, uh, I mean, you know, people ask me, like, what's going on over the day, and... I'll just, I, well, I mean, just about routine things. I just lie. Do you outright lie or, or something? Do you, do you outright lie or do you exaggerate? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I just make up things that never happened. But usually, it's just like, you know, to make a story better. You know, I think balance. a lot of people do that. That's just exaggerating. That's not necessarily compulsive lying. Uh -huh. Can you give us an example? Well, I mean, I don't know. My friend could come over and ask me. You know, uh, hey, what'd you do today, Brian? And I'll be like, you know, even though nothing happened or I just played tennis or something like that, I'll be like, or maybe here's a good idea. Like, I played tennis and I lost, but I'll tell her I played tennis and I won. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'll make up a completely different story. Yeah. Why? I, <laughs> I don't know. What does it do for you? How do you feel when you do it? Um, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's like, I just don't want to, it's like, I don't, I don't like the way that, like it's just boring, you know. So, right. so you, don't, you don't feel you don't feel sort of worthy of anyone's attention, even. Yeah. Unless you can give them something more. St well, I don't know. I don't it's a way of keeping distance, uh, keeping a distance from people because they never really know Who what the truth is about you. you. Right. Yeah, I find I do that an awful lot of. Things. And, and I think it's a way of manipulating people in your own quiet way, because mm -hmm. you're sort of pulling one over on them. You're kind of controlling them in a way because you're fe feeding them false information yeah. that they're believing. So it's a way to keep a distance and sort of control them in a way. Right. 
Like, yeah. Usually, I mean, I don't know. It's and I don't even know why I do it. I mean, just well, it mostly is, the question is how can like not just what can I do to stop it, but I mean, it's like it's not. I mean, if I could just stop it and say like, hey, you know, don't lie, I would. But I mean, the, it's out of my mouth before I even know I'm doing it. Then think before you speak. And I have a question: When you tell this girl, "Yeah, I won at tennis," even though you didn't, do you think that's changing? You think if you said I didn't win, that it would change her perception of you? No, I mean. It's, then why why tell her that you won when uh, in fact you didn't? Well, I don't know because what better good would that do? Sort of. Yeah, again. Not even sort of. Well, maybe yeah. this problem could be solved. You just got better at tennis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you lessons. Have to lie. Uh, actually, you know what my biggest problem in tennis is. <laughs> lying about the score. What? Lying, about, lying the score. about the score. No, 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 not lying about the score. It's my butthole. Uh, uh, yeah. I knew it. Yeah. I knew. It. See, you know, whenever, whenever uh, he couldn't answer, he stuttered too much. Did you notice that my when he uh, whenever somebody poses the question that way, they go, "You want to know yeah. why, yeah. or do you want to know what my best?" They're setting he, themselves up for their I, own. I always joke. know it's going to be a big, uh, big anus joke. I don't mind them, though. Yeah. But, uh, caught still him. Anus joke. Caught him. All right. Uh, let's take ourselves a little break. When let's we do. come back, we'll speak to uh, Sharon, who's, I'm guessing that's uh, the name, 14. Yeah. She dates guys between uh, 18 and 30. The yep. oldest guy was 23. What, then how did that, that doesn't make that? any sense? Well, I think it might be between 18 and 23. <laughs> yeah. She's addicted to this. Well, maybe she's attracted she to guys, guys 18 yeah. to. Hey, Sharon? Yeah. You're attracted to guys 18 to 30? Yeah. But the oldest guy you've dated is uh, 23? Yeah. Then how are you addicted to guys that go up to 30 if you've never dated one? Well, like... She's obsessed. She's, she's obsessed. obsessed. She's You're attracted, attracted, so you don't... She's open right. to it. All right, hold on a second there, Sharon. We're going to take ourselves a little break. Jamie Presley is our guest tonight. We'll be back with Sharon after this. Hey... Is uh, our good friends, Newfound Glory, who were on here last week in one of my favorite riffs. Jamie Presley is our guest tonight. Tom Katz is the name of uh, the new movie, and then uh, Joe Dirt is coming out of that, uh, coming out the uh, following week. That's with uh, David Spade and uh, Jack and Jill, of course, uh, Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock. And let's get back and talk to uh, Sharon, who's 14. Sharon? Yeah. So you like the older guys? Yeah. Have you? Did you have sex with uh, the twenty-three-year-old guy you were dating? No. Have you had sex? No. I see. Huh. Well, huh. that's not too bad. And how is it that you dated the twenty-three-year-old guy? Did he think you were older? No. Well, like you know those like talk line things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's how I meet him, and I'm like addicted to that. Hmm. And you you talk to uh, older guys, and then you arrange to meet them? Yeah. And uh, don't they pressure you for sex? They do, but they, I, they've tried to put the mood on me, but I just, like, you know... Where do you meet these guys? And where do you, you know, you met them online, but where do you then meet them physically? I meet at, like, a Chuck E. Cheese oh, yeah. no. or a um, Shakey's or something like that in the neighborhood. No, at, like, stores... I see it's stores. Yeah, you because know, I don't want them going to my house. I understand. And and what's in it for you? The attention? I don't know. I just I I guess I just like it. I think it's the attention, but I'm not sure. I think a lot of it is the adrenaline rush that you get when you know you're going to meet someone you have no idea about, you've never seen, and it's kind of a it's almost like you're doing something bad. Jamie got the gene. Yeah. Um, <laughs> th th some people respond to that, but 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 I I would bet more likely. Uh, dad took off ah. at about six, eight, something like that, right? Uh, two. Two. Oh, wow. So. Okay, so your dad split and kind of abandoned the family. Uh-huh. Was he around for a while and then just took off completely? Well, I haven't seen him since I was two. I haven't had contact with him at all. Two. Did you have a stepdad or anything like that? I have never had a technical stepdad, but I lived with my mom's fiancé. So. What was he like? He was physically abusive, but not sexually. All right. Well, that's good of him. That fills, See, fills out the picture. Well, for there's us. still decent guys out there. Yeah, that will just just be just crap physically out of your abused. Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you, from doing this show, I, I look at that as you, you're one of the lucky ones. 
who is not actually raped by stepdad. Yeah. I, I really uh, beating on your own kids is bad enough, but beating on someone else's kids is is like so out of the question. Do you, you know what I well, mean? Well, the fact that the other parent allows it to happen, yeah, is what's out of the question. R- yes. Yeah. That well, should I, never I, even I, be I blame to happen. I blame Mama just as much as I blame yeah. the wolf that she brings into the chicken coop. Exactly. Whether it's physical or sexual. Whatever it is, Mama goes out, finds a guy, brings him in, leaves him alone with their little daughter, and then he does God knows what to them. And then you follow the pattern <laughs> of right. the mother. All right. So uh, how about you stop doing this and, and try to get a little therapy for yourself, a little help for yourself? Yeah, I was in therapy. My, me and my mom were in it because um, I think my mom was in denial that he was uh, like throwing things at me. He wasn't like Obviously. Anything. Can you get back in touch with that therapist? Um, well, we had to move away because he was making threats after oh, we boy. moved out. Yeah, he boy. He yeah, was yeah. making threats to kill us. I stuff. think it'd be really great for you to Thanks. go into therapy alone. Thanks, Ma. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Couldn't have waited <clears> just to uh, wait, wait until the next guy came along. Had to grab that one. All right. Uh, it's time to get back into therapy. Or talk to somebody at school, counselor, that kind of thing. And, and get off these chat lines. Okay. Yeah, I agree you are addicted to them, but uh, maybe it's a relationship going with people your own age, something more real. Yeah, and believe me, the people you meet on there, they ain't the people on the commercial. The people on the commercial, a bunch of good-looking people who, whose businesses relocated them. Hey, I'm new in town. I'm, prof- I'm a professional. The boss just up. No, that ain't the dude you're talking to. No, just because her voice sounds good doesn't mean they are. Yeah, you're talking to a dude who's got a, a van up on blocks in his parents' driveway. That's really dangerous because one day you could go meet somebody and they could, you know, be really dangerous whether you're in a store or not. Yep, that's absolutely true. Uh, Pavora? 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 Is that how you say your name? Yes. How are you? I'm great. What kind of name is that? That's an Islamic name. My parents are Iranian. They like to really speak English. Interesting. Good times. What's up? Uh, I'm wondering, why does my voice seem to get lower after giving oral sex? (laughs) It's really weird. It seems like it's irritated or something. Yeah, that's gotta be. Dryness. It's like getting hoarse. It's yeah, also, it's uh, doesn't, doesn't Satan channel through you after oral sex? You know, Probably. Like, yeah. You saw the exercise? Mer- Mercedes McCambridge's voice. <laughs> 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 it seems to depend on... I'm gonna guy. fix you a sandwich. <laughs> what did you say? It seems to depend on who the guy is or if there's... Multiple. That means size is a problem. <laughs> But I, I suspect it, it's dryness. Is yeah. That, that saliva is not lubricating the vocal cords the way it normally would. It's going a different direction. So just drink some water, hot tea. Yeah. You'll be good to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's not anything about the substance you're being exposed to. And I ask your dad. He may have some thoughts <laughs> on it. Yeah, that's something you <laughs> should definitely discuss. I know Iranian so guys. I said something like that to, oh, my God. Oh, no, Iranian Yeah, guys, I don't know a father that would talk about that. But especially on. Iranian guys are very liberal that way. <laughs> especially with the ladies. Oh, but you shouldn't have a problem with that, right? My parents would take a belt to me. That's just, like, not even funny. It's like, right now they think that I'm staying at, like, another girl's house. They don't know, like, if I go to a party and there are guys there, oh, God, my parents can't find out about that, especially, you know. Don't let that let... <laughs> another another uh, delightful convert from yeah. the American system. That's right. You lash out because your parents never talk to you about anything or let you do it's, anything. It's the, the kids end up so far from where the parents wish them to be. Or yeah, because they don't let them talk are. about anything. Well, they and, scare them instead of being and, their friends. But, and here's the deal, too, everybody who's moved to this country. Uh, you you may be from somewhere else, but your kids are pretty much from here. And they will they go to school with people who are from here. They watch television for, made by people from here. And they will adapt the younger to younger generations the are getting older and older and older. Yes. And smarter and smarter. And younger right. And younger. and younger and younger, yeah. I know. It's, it's uh, not unusual to hear about a 15-year-old girl going to Japan by herself. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was unusual, Shocking. but it wasn't scary to me. It's for out of control. Reason. Craig? Yo. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Okay, um, Adam Crowley, you're awesome, okay? Thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, me and a bunch of my friends are having a sleepover, mm. and we brought up the question, why do you guys have nipples? Right. Why do women have nipples other than feet breastfeeding? Well, that's a pretty good reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ma- maintain the Yeah, I know, but I mean... The species. Well, we've, uh, we've thought about this long and hard. First off, I have sensitive nipples. I'm a man who uses my nipples. Yes. I like a little nipple play. Right. FYI, Jamie. I'm okay, great. Saying, Good to know. No, I'm not saying you have <laughs> to. 
No, I, I'm not putting any pressure. You don't have to act on it. I'm okay. just saying, I'm just saying, FYI. All right. I'm, I'm just saying good to know. Sensitive yeah. nipples for Adam. Pinched or licked or rubbed, what do you like? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That, that's all good. I'm just saying if it comes up, that's all. If there's, you know. Yeah, I hear you. A lot can change in this town. <laughs> Career might not be going as good a few years from now. Yeah, and you'll be the one I run to. <laughs> She's like, <"Wah!" laughs> I'm putting it out there. Okay, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Wow, good she appreciates know. your comedy now, Adam. I do. <laughs> I really You're killing do. her. You're killing her. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you shouldn't have called her nuts. Yeah. All right. See? But, okay. She's not so crazy. Yes, after all. men. Mm -hmm. Men have nipples because we all start off as women. Yes. Is that the answer? We all share that common genetic heritage, or, or rather embryological heritage, and the presence of the Y chromosome causes the man to go off in a different direction. But all mammals have nipple lines, and they don't fully resorb. You just you continue to have them. Uh, it's just that when estrogen turns on in the female, the nipple then develops into a full breast. We just never actually have the estrogen turn on. Good actually, some men do. They do have testosterone converted to estrogen in the periphery, so fat men do. And early on, before your testes really turn on, the adrenal glands produce hormones, mm -hmm. much of which becomes estrogenized. Ah. Oh. And that, so when you're 13, 14, and if you smoke a lot of pot, that also causes it. God, no way. Yes. That's funny. All right. We will not let... If, not if you got it. We'll take ourselves a little break and your stone. It, it is funny, I guess, isn't it? Jamie Presley's our guest tonight. I'm going to tell her more about my sensitive nipples, and then we'll be back <laughs> after this. Well, there you have it. Another uh, fantabulous uh, Love Line show in the ground. I want to thank Jamie Presley for coming in here tonight. and being Thanks a, for having being me. A delight. Hell you gotta, yeah. You must rescind your previous negativity. She, she is not nuts. See, I'm sane. Right. She's uh, she's nuts about my sensitive nipples, but she's not <laughs> insane. You're insane. I can't wait for you to go out of town so I can come and take your job. That's right. It'll yeah. never happen. Yeah, well, it's all right. But no, you you're you're very candid, you're you're sharp, you're forthright and you're a great guest and we do appreciate you coming on and hanging out. And, Thanks uh, for having me. Just being You know, I was going to leave after an hour and I stayed the whole time cuz I had so much fun. We appreciate God that too. God bless you. Bill Maher. Had a great time. In here tomorrow night until next time, it's Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. We might not be going as good a few years from now. Yeah, and you'll be the one I run to. <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.